Kirsten knows Young Gravy, and I happen to have the smartest kid alive. All this plus burning Minnesota Wild and NHL questions, as always, were created by New Voice Studios, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, Livia, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 4, Episode 190. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Bar Down Beauties, episode 190. Jesse Pierce, Kirsten Kroll. Kirsten, how are we this Monday morning? You know, we're we're surviving right now. But on a more important note, I think I'm going to get bangs. I don't know if I'm going through an Please existential don't. crisis. No, not yeah. full on bangs. The curtain bangs. But that, like the long no. curtain bangs. Yeah, no, I know. I know what you're talking. But everyone who gets bangs regrets it. Always. I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm going to well. Like I'm, my friend has the same face shape as me and she got them over the weekend and I'm obsessed. I don't know. I'm just bored. I'm bored of my hair. I'm bored of a lot of things. I'm changing that. it up. So I'm I getting can, curtain bangs. I can respect that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how we, how we like those. Um, uh, yep. Moving on to hockey, I guess <laughs> I have nothing. I have no hair updates. My kid might be the smartest kid in the world if you guys care about that. So that's exciting for me. Had his kindergarten assessment this morning he is at the point where like they expect kids to be at the end of kindergarten before he's even entered kindergarten, which is great, which is great. But I'm also like, Oh my God, he's going to be so bored. So my husband's in the middle of trying to get him moved up to like the fourth grade, you know, normal stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. smartest kid in the world, obviously gets his brains from mom. Love to see it. Uh, And yeah, that's about all that's new. I'm also legit going to be a Bev cart girl guys. Please come out and see me at loggers. My dreams have come true. I'm very excited for this. How you have the time to add another job beyond me. I mean, you I don't have the time. I don't, but golf season is only a little bit longer, right? I also get to golf then at loggers, which I'm excited about. There's actually a huge connection with golf and hockey at loggers. So not only is Lapanta golf, I'm training in with Anthony Lapanta's daughter, actually, which is going to be very fun. But I guess Dean Evson is a frequenter at loggers. So I cannot wait to harass Dean on the golf course. Like I can imagine his face when he sees me pull. <laughs> in the best cart and i'll be like what's up and he'll be like what the bleep are you doing here <laughs> it's gonna be so great it's gonna be great dean. So poor dean up. i know poor dean he's been worn so everyone any- pour one out for dean i know it's it's gonna be exciting i'm very excited so if you guys are out at loggers be sure to hail me down and i'll get you some some drinks and food and and whatnot very excited so thanks to tim and loggers for taking a chance on a girl that's never been a bad court girl in her life but I got this. We got this, Kirsten. You know what else we got? We got hockey to talk. Not really, but because we're still in this long, long off season, we're going to make do. So I've got a couple questions to pose for us. We're going to answer them and we're going to see what uh, our viewers and audience think. I'd love for you guys to obviously engage. Tell us your thoughts. The first one I'm going to start with GM Bill Guerin has to make one trade this season at any point, whether it's at trade deadline, whether it's before who or what position will he trade and why? Hmm. I definitely see him making a trade yep. um, because he's not the kind of general manager who just sits around and watches. I think he likes to play coy and like kind of play like, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But he's always doing something. He's always scheming. And we love that about him. Um, I don't know why, but my initial thought <laughs> and I'm going to probably ruffle some feathers with this one. I don't know. I could see him dealing Kalen Addison for something. Just because yeah. losing Matt Dumba, your uh, your defense right now. I mean, you got some highlights. You've got Jonas Brodeen still, Brock Faber, Jared Spurgeon still. So you've got key pieces. Midzy, I can't leave him out. Can't leave uh, Midzy out. But other than that, really, your top four players. I don't know. I could see him keeping his eyes open for. Do so you think team. you think defense is kind of in his realm of like we got to shake it up yeah I do and I mean I think too you're always looking for other wingers centers in Minnesota because everyone's fixated on a center 
Um, but just, I don't know. I think partially too carrying over from last season, how Kalen Addison was seemingly in the doghouse the majority of the year. I could see him potentially being on the chopping block. That's fair. I mean, for say, I think defense and center obviously are the two areas that need depth the most. Uh, because you said defense, I'll go center. They're going to trade for a center. They will get rid of Connor Dewar, maybe. Or Matt Zuccarello. You know, let's get rid of Matt Zuccarello. I'm going to get, sorry, Zuki. He's out. He's let's going to make be real mad. Under- <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, he's, he's out here. We'll get to Matt Zuccarello. I got more on Matt Zuccarello in the next couple questions, but I think he will for sure trade for center. I think it'll be probably around November. I don't think he will wait because I think depending on how the season starts off, he might have a good idea by then what he's got, right? Because if he is going to rely mm-hmm. on some of these younger guys, again, it could still be a very good year for them. They still could make the playoffs, but he's going to need to find some center depth. He's going to need to have that position solidified if he really wants to do anything this year, which leads me to my next question. Will Marco Rossi be on the NHL roster opening night? And will Kalen Addison be on the opening night roster? Marco Rossi, yes, because he has to be. He has to be. And at this point, you're, I think you're throwing all your marbles at him just to see what he's got to try to develop him to see if he can live up to the expectations. So yes, Kaylin Addison, I, I just, I don't understand what's going on with him and what (laughs) the organization is trying to do with him. I could see him potentially being a healthy scratch opening night. Yeah. I think that one and John Merrill in the lineup. Yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. 100% 100% Probably. what's going to happen. Again, they still haven't even come Recency to terms. Recency bias, maybe. Still have not come to terms with Kalen <clears throat> as far as a number goes, which they should. They're just probably not in a hurry. They know he's on the team, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I think that Marco will be on the opening night roster. And you're right. I think, Kirsten, he, he has to be. This is the make or break year without question because, again, or trade him. You need to trade him for value before he goes out and just absolutely sorry for the bad words, craps on the bed. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to show that he doesn't have the talent that you're hoping he does, which he does. Marco Rossi has talent, but is that AHL talent or is that NHL talent? It has yet to be seen. He hasn't been given the opportunity in the NHL to see it, but maybe he hasn't warranted those looks quite either. You can be a phenomenal AHL player that doesn't always transcend Mm -hmm. translate over to the NHL. So Marco will be on the opening night roster because they have to, because they have to figure him out. They have to know what they're doing. And again, or you have to make it maybe a November trade. Maybe he's another name that is, is able to move for, for something better. If you don't think you have what you need in him, then you kind of kind of move on. I don't want the comparison to Jewel Eric's neck because people love to do that. Like it took him a long time. Marco Rossi is not Jewel Eric's neck. They're different body sizes. They're different types of players. So that centerman, let them grow crap is not going to work with me so that's where i feel marco yes kaylin kaylin no i'm feisty today kirsten i, I was just gonna say jesse bring in the fire a little, little and feisty. you know i also love a jewel erickson Eck mention too so that puts a smile on my face just love that man just for, you. Just, for well, me. We, just for you we mentioned zuki do you think kirsten he will underperform compared to last year now for reference last year he had 67 points 22 goals 45 assists through 78 games he had a little bit of injury there uh 26 penalty minutes what do you think i mean he's 35 years old he definitely i mean the past two seasons he's been good playing with kirill kaprizov we know kirill loves him some zuki we know the chemistry they have but we've also wanted to see that broken up for some time do you think zuki underperforms or overperforms aka will he do better than 67 points or not I think he probably will not do better than that. To be fair to him, I think he has peaked and is probably on the downward end, but not so much because he's not a skilled player, but just because he's getting to that age. He is one of the older players now in the league, like 35 as a player in the NHL, especially when the game is getting so much faster and there's just continuing continuously younger guys coming up and up. That's just the way the game goes. So I think he's probably on the downward end of his career at this point. So I think at this point, I don't know how much more we can realistically expect from him. I'm not putting this out into the atmosphere. I'm not saying anything and I'm not willing this into existence. I just have a feeling he's going to get hurt this year. Like there's going to be some Mm -hmm. devastating injury that removes him from a large portion of the season, which obviously will hurt numbers. So I just, I have this, 
scary feeling because I just don't know that he ever fully healed from whatever was ailing him last year. Mm-hmm. And I just something something just I'm I'm nervous about again. Well, that's and to be fair, again, that comes with age. Like, unfortunately, yeah. that is a part of getting older and being where he's at in the league. Like, it's almost unfortunately inevitable. Again, to piggyback off what you said, you're not manifesting that no one wants that to happen. No. But it is a very possible thing that could happen. I mean, I wake up out of bed after doing absolutely nothing and everything cracks. Everything makes a noise. Everything's sore constantly. That's just me. That's without getting hit by men larger than me, without skating, without literally without doing anything except maybe golfing or picking up children. So yeah. my joints tell me when it's going to rain outside. So I <laughs> feel you hard and I am still 26. <laughs> well, you're in for a long haul, aren't you? It's- can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, next question I have Patrick Maroon better than Ryan Reeves. Now we all loved Revo, right? In the locker room, especially, I think. And he certainly did his job. But did he do his job? Because when the playoffs came around, you didn't see quite the physicality. Now I do agree that players probably don't want to get baited into fighting Ryan Reeves in any situation, right? Not only does it hurt your team, but Ryan Reeves will probably pummel you. So there's probably a little bit of that. But are you excited? Do you think Patrick Maroon is an upgrade? from Ryan Reeves or do you think they'll play a fairly similar role as far as just that physicality fourth line energy type of thing um I'm gonna say fairly similar but I think Patrick Patty Maroon he gets the he gets the edge I don't know why I keep wanting to call him Patrick that seems too formal for her I feel like I always want to say go back and calling him Patty so I have to correct myself Patty Maroon that's what he's going by I think he has the slight edge over Ryan Reeves. Now, initially, when I found out we weren't getting Ryan Reeves back, that he was signing with Toronto, which, you know, as he should, that's a the way Toronto was willing to sign him for three years, the money he was given, as he should sign with Toronto. So that's a great deal for Ryan Reeves. Mm-hmm. I was disappointed just because I really enjoyed Ryan Reeves. But knowing we get Maroon in exchange... Essentially, I know it wasn't a trade. We just picked up Maroon. No, uh, it wasn't a trade. Why do people keep messing this up? This was messed up last week on Judd's hockey show, too. It was before yeah, he was traded. They traded for him. They gave the they gave uh Tampa a pick, I think. Oh, well, whatever. I'm we won't saying, but see it, it. was <laughs> they won't be feeling that for a little while. I don't know. No, it, no but it was like Judd said that last week too. Shout out to Judd's hockey show. I'm also over on that. And he was like, well, yeah, they picked him up in free agency. Like, no, he was traded for. They traded for him. It was, yeah, draft rights or something like that. I think it's unconditional, though. I don't think it came with conditions. So there's also that to be considered. But yes, it was a it was a trade, people. Trade. All right. So anyways, back to what I was saying. <laughs> um, just I think the experience Maroon brings, obviously being a Stanley Cup winner three times, that is nice to have to your resume coming in. So hopefully he can bring some winning experience to the wild as well. No, I think they're going to love big rig. I think especially this season, the more veteran voices that you can have the better. Now, obviously again, he is on the older side of things, which isn't great in a league that's continuously going younger, but I think his experience is going to be completely transformative for players like Matt Boldy. And, you know, maybe not even guys that need to play that big body type. Maybe it's great for Jules Eric's neck. Maybe it's, great for Ryan Hartman to re-identify as as that role I mean last year Patrick Maroon had 14 sorry you're right Patrick does sound weird I don't it sounds so weird it's way too formal Patty Maroon had just 14 points five goals nine assists we all know Ryan Reeves can score I do feel like Pat Maroon has like a little bit of a higher skill set than Ryan Reeves does and that's in Ryan Reeves found the back of the net found his way to contribute and I think Patrick Maroon I don't know why I keep saying Patrick. You Pat see, you say it, and it's like I need to correct myself because that feels wrong. Feels wrong. Also Patty. feels wrong calling him Big Rig because Greenway was called that so long. But Maroon owned it first, so he really did own it first. But it just it that. feels weird. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, Maroon Five will. Uh, <laughs> can we go with that? Do you want to go your Taylor Swift Maroon? Isn't he what number is he wearing? Number five? five. No, no I don't. number five. Yeah, I just said maroon five because they're a, they're artists, they're a group. Yes, we can go Taylor Swift maroon. Okay, Taylor Swift maroon. Taylor Swift maroon. Uh, yes, will be an upgrade from from Ryan Reeves. <laughs> I mentioned Ryan Hartman. Is Ryan Hartman your number one center opening night? No. Who's your number one center opening night? Marco Rossi. 
Ooh, between Kirill and Zuki, giving the people what they want, right? Oh, the gate. Well, I, I just, I think that goes to say, like, the Wild really need to throw everything at him to see what he can do. I, that's essentially why they drafted him. They wanted him to be a top line center, so you yeah. need to give him the opportunity. This is the make or break season for him to see if he's going to be everything that you hoped he would. So it's essentially just what you need to do at this point. I think he'll be the number one center because it's Dean Evson's team and Dean Evson will keep those three together at least to start. I think you're right. I mean, I can see Dean putting Marco with Kirill and Zuki like the last preseason game and saying, there you go, guys. I did it. Cross it off your list. We're going back to what we like. Um, I just think to start things off, Dean will go with his familiarity because that's a very Dean Evson thing. When I'm out Bev Cardi and I will be sure to ask him that. I will say, hey, Dean, who's your number one goalie? And hey, Dean, who is your number one center? Speaking He's of going to love one, you bugging him in his free time. <laughs> He's never going to golf sort of at way. loggers ever again. <laughs> but no, I mean, there is a stubbornness about Dean. So I think that's a fair point. But I also think Bill Guerin's probably feeling a little bit of pressure as well, yeah. having selected Marco Rossi and the expectations. So I think, you know, there's probably conversations a little bit like we need between the two of them. I guarantee there has to be conversations like we need to see what we've got this year for real. Well, and as Garen said, he wants some F you in Marco Rossi's game. So hopefully Marco. I love that. We need that. that in every player. I know that's so true in every media part. Like, you know, that's what we need to be more of. That's what the that's wilds true. motto needs to be this year. Yes. Yes. It will never happen. F U like energy. <laughs> That's the motto. Oh boy. And then a final Minnesota wild question before we get into preseason, hopefully soon, just very soon. I actually didn't realize I'd miss it, but I miss it. Uh, number one goalie who's starting opening night for the Minnesota wild. Gus. Gus. That's you don't sign one. him to a new contract like that. Say he's going to be your number one goalie and not start him opening night. No. Against Florida, too. I like it. Gus, Gus bus. Let us know some of your answers to those questions that we just asked. Would love to stir up some conversation. Love to hear what you guys think. What should we call Pat Maroon? I think that's open for, for consideration as well. We'll talk to him not about Patrick. that. No, not Patrick. Not Patrick. Definitely not. Patrick keeps giving me a SpongeBob vibe, too, I think, yes. which is the other part of But it's funny because I actually never watched SpongeBob. I am not of the generation that was very spongebob -y. So I didn't really watch it either, but I definitely grew up like my friends are obsessed with SpongeBob. I love a good SpongeBob meme. There's mm -hmm. a few episodes that literally have me rolling on the floor, but I'm also not like die hard. Like I loved that show. I was a Disney kid. Yeah, fair, fair. Right on to that. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here with some exciting news to share. Livia Weight Control Centers was just named Minnesota's best weight loss program for the third year in a row. That's three years of gold standard, 14 years of changing lives. Celebrate with Livia today by joining and getting three months absolutely free. With Livia's doctor recommended program, you could lose up to 10 pounds or more in your first two weeks. Look at me, I am down over 20 pounds and counting. Cannot believe how Livia has changed my life, not only physically, mentally, and emotionally as well. Join Livia today, visit Livia.com, that's L-I-V-E-A.com, or call 855-GO-LIVIA to get started on your weight loss journey today. They're the gold standard. Join up, sync up, have a great rest of your summer. Mention my name when you visit Livia and start your weight loss journey today. We're back. Moving on from Minnesota Wild specific questions we have to get through this offseason. The lum drum, mola drum. What, am I, what word am I trying to think? The, the dog days of August. We'll go with that. But there's yes. something. Lola melodramatic. Drum. I don't know. No, not melodramatic. Mundane. Well, yeah, mundane's a good one too. Uh huh. Something. The boring. It's just boring. All right. It's boring, guys. We're bored. Need things to happen. Uh, if you could change the preseason for the National Hockey League, would you? And how would you change it? Whether that be, I I don't know. There's a hundred different things you could do. Would you change it? Would you change your mic? Would you fix your mic? Um, you know, it's it's great when we're recording a podcast. And okay, you know. no, I'm back. I bumped it. I was messing with it, and it's just yeah, that was yeah. my B. Yeah. Um, changing the preseason. I, is this an unpopular opinion? Probably you need to see what you have, especially with younger kids who's going to officially make the roster, all that good jazz. I hate the preseason <laughs> football too, hockey. It's yeah. anticlimactic. No one cares. It's essentially meaningless. 
I mean, it's amazing to me how many people do actually care. We were talking. I don't about understand. Yeah. Like the Vikings preseason game number two on Saturday. I was like, who cares? Yeah. I would change it to be more of like, I would almost want to do like a tournament or something like exciting like that. Cause as you'd mentioned, and certainly they do that with like the prospect games and stuff like that. Or like, I believe I've heard tell that this year, St. Louis, Chicago, Minnesota are going to have some sort of tournament um, between the, their prospects. So, I mean, something more like that, like just, yeah, make it more exciting. Right. Like, I mean, there's excitement in the air because the sports back. And I think that's what the NFL gets to, right? Like the sports back and the NFL has such a huge roster to cut down. The mm-hmm. NHL never really has as much. Like you certainly have guys that are going to go out there and try in preseason game one, but they're not making it right. Like it's pretty sure. clear cut generally for the NHL NFL probably too. But yeah, I would just do some sort of like round Robin tournament or make it like always do home and home, which I think this preseason for the wild is more of like a home and home situation. They're kind of Dallas and then Dallas comes here. So I do like that. Like, I don't know, maybe just start building some rivalries or I don't know, yeah. just need some more excitement to it to get me excited. Cause you're right, Kirsten preseason. And this goes across the board, except maybe yeah. spring training, spring training just feels different, but that's probably because it's in a different location and you're doing it mm-hmm. in different ways. Like hockey needs to get on board with that. I agree. And also too, And maybe this applies a little bit more to football as opposed to hockey, but no one wants to get hurt in the preseason. Like no one, unless your back is against the wall and you're really trying to make a roster, you're not giving a hundred percent in the preseason. So it's Mm -hmm. almost like an all-star game and stuff. It's kind of like, why are we doing this? So I would love to bring back, and this kind of leads into something I was going to talk about at the end, but we'll just do it right now. I want to bring back the, like prospects versus the pros or whatever they did a couple of years ago, right? Where they had like when Austin Matthews was a young rookie or like the rookies versus this, like, or North America versus Europe and like that type of stuff. That's fun. You're still getting the mm-hmm. same reps in. You're still kind of getting the same workout and you're getting to mix in those experienced players with the young, like do something like that. Like that would be super, super fun. I want to see just this brand new 17 year old, just absolutely embarrass a guy like Austin Matthews. Yeah. Like, I just think that would be so great. It would be so Uh, great. Can you imagine Connor McDavid's face getting just embarrassed by Bedard? No. Did you hear Con played in a beer league game up in Canada? And so did, um, uh, what's his name? The LA Kings first rounder from like two years ago defenseman byron by by yeah no god now you're gonna make me look this up i'm gonna make you look unprepared does con mcdavid drink beer i just can't imagine i don't know i can't Um, imagine oh man now i have to go through this whole thing what is his name it's i know it's with a b quentin byfield that's who it's quentin byfield i believe was also out there on the ice con mcdavid's team lost Mm. shocking Tough tough sledding for con um <laughs> maybe regular, no more beer for con maybe no more beer i can't imagine or if he does it's probably like not in a cool way probably goes pinkies out probably sometimes i find myself drinking beer at the or he definitely out. pours it Just, into a glass oh my god with a straw can you imagine <laughs> <laughs> no sometimes i will be drinking a beer or like even a glass of wine and i will find myself with my pinky up just subconsciously sometimes. and i'm like why yeah. why am i doing this so yeah. I need to see Khan doing that. Somebody, the paparazzi, please, can we just get a picture of that for me? Yeah. I don't so I can add it to my collection of Khan McDavid photos that live rent-free in my mind. I'm specifically referencing him with Machine Gun Kelly at the All-Star Game <laughs> a couple years ago. Seems like he's a Merlot drinker or like a Jack, like high-end whiskey. No, just watch him be the type of guy that just tosses back bush lights. There's no way there Just is imagine, no. imagine. <laughs> I love, I love that this derailed into a way more fun conversation. I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's genuine. It's authentic. This is why you listen to the bar down beauty. So we can wonder what Connor McDavid drinks in his off season spare time. Just, I can't picture, I can't picture any of it. Can't picture tarps off going buck wild. You know, no, I can't either. A Leon dry idol though. He yeah. is definitely like fine wine. Like I guarantee he yeah. would never touch a beer. Yeah, I could see that too. Although I don't know, he's German. Mm, great point. But just he gives me the vibe that like he is a very fancy Cabernet Sauvignon kind of wine drinker. Yeah, that's true. The North Americans were the ones that get a little 
little little wackadoodle. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yay! Speaking of, we'll we'll skip to this one then. Yay or nay on overseas games? They're going to Australia. They're obviously at Minnesota Wild. They're going to be over in Sweden. They've done this. I personally love it. I just would like to see it not in the middle of the season. That's my only kind of gripe with it. I do. I love it. I love growing hockey. I think Australia is going to be really cool, but it just, I feel like it takes a lot of momentum. That's just getting started when it happens in like November, December. Agreed. I say huge. Yay. Especially in Europe. We have so many Swedes on the wild. So for them to be a team that's going over, not only is that huge for us, but think of all the Europeans who follow these players and get a chance to go see them in person, which is probably, unless they're making the trip over here, they never get to do, or, you know, off season when these players go back, whatever they choose to do in their free time. So I think it's huge for the fan bases over there. Australia seems a little out of left field for me. I think it'll be a really great experience for the players, everyone who gets to go down there. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, I don't see how this is going to work, bringing the game down there. But so there's I'm like int- a, I'm intrigued. There's South African teams, there's Kenyan teams. Like there are it amazes teams. me it's how amazing. big the game is in other areas of the world that you wouldn't even think about. Um, like at the Let's Play Hockey Expo, we met who was yeah. it? I, um, Robo oh Rob. Gosh. Yes, is that who it was? Yeah, so he was talking about um South African hockey and everything, and was like, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's it's awesome. You just love to see it grow the game as much as we can. Just do it in like September. Like, there you go. Maybe that's your replacement. That's the preseason. That's your preseason. Everybody gets to go overseas. The NHL can foot that bill. It'll be fine. They, they're not hurting for the money. No, exactly. Leads me to my final question. Are you familiar? Because they haven't had this since you've probably like been alive, really. The World Cup of Hockey. I've heard of it. Now, if it's Garen, I think, recently happened, one. people are going to rip me apart for me. Being- no, I mean, it hasn't. It started in like. I think the idea was the concept was made in 92. The first game was in 96. And I can't even remember the last. I mean, they do now in the spring, they do their international competition, right? The world championships for NHL players. But they used to have this World Cup of Hockey, which used to be the Canada Cup. Mm-hmm. And it's it was just really cool. Like US if it was 96, Canada, I potentially Finland. was an infant or still just a thought. Yeah, that's God, that's sad. But I just want to bring that back. That's all I want. I just want Gary Bettman. To bring that back. They brought it back in 2016. They did Team Europe, Team North America, which we loved. They had planned to do one in 2020. Um, I know the Players Association kind of has a problem with it. I don't care. I want it back. I think it would be fun. Again, that could be a replacement for your preseason games is a World Cup of Hockey. Yeah. Also, another thought, and this might, again, I don't know. It Maybe it's a thought shared with other people. Probably not, though. So I might ruffle some feathers. There are so many hockey tournaments. It is hard to keep track of all of them. That's fair. Like there are so that. many all across the board, but not ones that are sanctioned necessarily by the NHL or like fully. Yes, created absolutely. Not sanctioned by the NHL, just international tournaments and everything. It feels like there's one every other week, like between yeah. junior hockey and all across the board. That's true. So I think sometimes because of how many more. there are in the off season, it essentially loses momentum sometimes. Yeah, that's fair. All right, that's good. That's going to wrap up our second segment for this week's episode of Bar Down Beauties. When we come back, it's state fair time, baby. Stay tuned. We're back. State fair time. Kirsten, are you a big Minnesota state fair goer? Do you not partake? What's your What's your vibe on the fair? Not a big state fair person at really? all. I genuinely, I prefer county fairs. I okay. think with the state fair, there's way too many people. You're just essentially waiting in long lines constantly. Yeah. And I just, I feel county fairs have so much more to offer. It's more of an experience, an enjoyable experience. Cause you, if you're looking to go see the livestock lines are so much shorter. I just feel like you really get the opportunity to go do things you want to do. Whereas again, state fair, you're just waiting in lines and spending went, a lot of money. Went to five county fairs this summer. Cause I just love going to fairs right I do it mm-hmm. the vibe from each county fair is always so dramatically different and I just oh yeah I love it it is the best people watching um and like you said yeah it's it's usually a lot smaller we saw the best demo derby I've ever seen was in Chisago at their county fair Washington County Fair is more my area I like that Ramsey County mm, don't do that one no much so much anymore um but yes I I agree I love county fairs but I do 
love the state fair when I was a teen that's what I would do I'd like hop on the bus and we'd go down there and ride the midway like mm-hmm. all night long I would go multiple nights I'm not a big foodie I don't ever claim to go for and I don't because that like, shocks me from you I know I I always make a list there's always things that I do want to try but because it's always deep fried and it is so freaking hot that's like the last thing I want to eat so unfortunately I end up pounding a bunch of beer instead which I try so I'm more of like the beer connoisseur if you will um, like, you know, the pickle pizza was a big thing last year. I've already had pickle pizza. Shout out QC pizza. Been really there, good. done that. Yeah. I mean, I, and I also like to go to a taste of the fair, which happens in like May and it's like a smaller downsized version of the state yes. fair. So I get a little bit of prep in that way, but I will be attending the state fair at least twice. One day, my husband and I go, we just do our thing for the day without kids. Mm-hmm. And another time I will probably take the children because there is a ton of free stuff. For them for to sure. do too, which I'm always jacked on. So it's not necessarily the food. It's just kind of just being there, right? But yeah. I always try to choose not hot days because, yeah, that is freaking miserable. And this week, mm-hmm. it's looking questionable. but uh, Very questionable. I will say, too, um, a shout out to the Olmstead County Fair. That is the one I typically frequent because it's right nice. in Rochester, Minnesota. Shout out again. Um, but no, I think too, I think I probably don't feel as connected to the state fair as other people because I did grow up in Rochester. So I wasn't, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an hour and a half drive minimum without even considering traffic to get to the state fair. That's a soft drive. Most people will tell you that's soft. That's that's yeah. But tell it, it became nothing considering I used to drive to and from wild games, same night up and down highway 52, that Mm -hmm. hour 15 drive every single day. Um, but no, I will be going to the state fair this year to see rochester's pride and joy young gravy perform so i'll be at the grandstands that night he's from rochester i've said this so many times no idea he's zero from idea. rochester wow yes i all right i mean not to name drop but yeah like i knew him in high school so it was very wait, stop How, wait wait are you guys like the same age what he's a no. year older than me i went to john marshall he went to mayo like i literally you, we used to be at the same parties at times. So again, I'm not trying to name drop, but yes, that's why when I found out in college, I saw people talking about this young gravy guy on Snapchat, they were selling tickets. And I'm like, who is this? Then I find out it's Matt. And I'm like, what's his name? What? What's his real? I don't even know his real Matt name. Matt Howery. Okay. Like that's it, it just, it was, I think it started as a joke that he became young gravy when he was going to college in Madison, yeah, people Wisconsin. love, love the crap out of this kid. I know I, I he's, he's from Rochester. Oh God, he is. Oh, wow. Now I'm down the rabbit hole. Forget. We're not going to talk about any of the state fair things. Now we're just going to go. Well, He's performing at the state fair. Yeah. That's cool. That's then it wow. was just super weird when I saw he was dating Addison Ray's mom for a moment in time last year. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's like yeah, blown he's up so much. Rochester's proud. We own him. Like not own him, but like we embrace him. But it's just it's weird. Like Second it was just, famous I never would have imagined. Behind you, it's amazing. Yeah, and his yeah. friends, his manager, and it's cool to see. I love seeing people from my little corner of the state succeed. All right, so we'll we'll close it out with this. So you would so state fair. You're mostly going for concerts then, if you're to go. Yeah, if I'm going, I'm going for concerts. Okay, that's fair. I'm going for rides and beer. We'll leave it at that. Let us know what you're going to go to the state fair for. I will be out there Friday. I think I will be out there with Score North possibly next week. I'm hoping I will be. But uh, otherwise, that's going to do it for this week's of episode. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Bar Down Beauties. It's it's Monday morning, Kristen. I can't. I have no explanation anymore. We're getting through. We're making it through the off season. The hockey light is in sight. Have a great rest of your week and uh, go wild. Near, 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 near.